Hi, my name is Teal, and I'm your host for the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast, where we share stories of amazing women who live in our communities. My hope is that you will feel encouraged and inspired after listening to each episode. Today, my guest is Sam Horn. She is a wife, a mama to three, owner of Neighborhood Bar Concord, a SweatNet Charlotte ambassador and 2018 Tone It Up winner. Welcome to the show, Sam. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you here. And there's so much to talk about before we really get started. So talk about the 2018 Tone It Up winner. What is that? Yes. Oh my gosh. So Tone It Up, obviously a huge fitness community, um, did all their stuff through their app just at home a couple years ago. And they did a summer Tone Up program which was, I want to say like six weeks and you just do a workout every day. And at the end of six weeks, you can send in your before and after pictures. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I had a really good before and after and I sent it in and it ended, I want to say like August of 2018. And it wasn't until March of 2019 that I got a random Instagram message and they're like, Hey, you're one of our grand prize, grand prize winners out of That's like, awesome. I think there was like 20 of us that were grand prize winners and they, you know, put, posted our before and after, um, super cool experience. That's awesome. Well, I saw that and I was like, cause I know who toned it up is. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that's pretty big deal. Cause they're a big, they're very well known in the fitness industry. So I thought that was really cool. Yes. Thanks. So I want to start off talking about cheerleading because you and I can so talk about cheerleading probably forever. Um, and I, and you talked about you had a big win state championship and when you were in high school, but when did that all start for you? When did you cheer? Um, so I grew up playing sports, um, but I didn't start cheering until ninth grade in high school. And I am still totally that girl that cheered in high school. And I hold, I'm holding on to that. I'm, I'm holding on to that. I was a cheerleader. Um, but my senior year, we did uh, competitions. And we had guys, so we were co-ed, and we won the 2004 co-ed state championship. I had my ring and everything. Oh, that's crazy cool. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, we have to talk about cheerleading, because I, I love was it. the same. <laughs> like, I'm still that, like, if, when people meet me, it's like, they still think of you as a cheerleader, just because of, like, you know, your personality, and, and I feel that from you, that same vibe, and then I saw that, and I was like, oh my gosh, it makes total sense, I love it. Yeah, yes, and I actually, I was with um, the founder of Neighborhood Bar over the weekend, and she's the cutest petite little thing ever, and she was a cheerleader even in college, and so there was a couple of us, she was like, oh my gosh, we should so do a stunt, and so we were all like, okay, so they have me as a back spot, I was a flyer in high school, so we're getting ready to go. And I was like, Katie, you should probably know I've never been a back spot before, <laughs> but we did it. <laughs> and I was like, I'm reliving everything right now. This is great. I love it. That's <laughs> awesome. And I think that and really, if anybody's ever cheered a dance, they can totally relate to this conversation. Right. <laughs> okay. So when did you find bar? So when did that become because I know that, you, you know, being the owner of Neighborhood Bar Concord, this started somewhere, and I'm, I'm guessing this just started with you personally. Yes, so I found Bar probably 2014, um, did it in studio for a little while, um, and then found out that we were pregnant with twins, and decided we were going to move back closer to my parents, so there just wasn't a studio here in Concord, Harrisburg, so I did everything from home. I was streaming workouts at my house, holding on to the back of the couch, doing what we're all doing now, just long before a global <laughs> pandemic. I'm holding on to my couch, I'm holding on to my kitchen island. Um, and then just kind of decided, I love this and I miss being in that group setting. You're pushed harder when you're around other people, when you're working out with your friends. So I just one day looked at my husband and was like, I think I wanna bring a bar studio to my hometown. He was like, okay. I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> That's awesome. And before that, because you're, you were, um, and you worked in healthcare. Yes. I worked at Levine Cancer Institute. So I've always been in healthcare, um, pre getting into bar. 
um, which I absolutely loved. Um, Levine Cancer Institute is an amazing place um, with amazing patients, doctors, the whole entire place is just incredible. Um, but with having the twins at home and trying to balance my husband's work schedule, it just was not working for me to be outside of the house working. So came back home and then decided I still just needed a little bit, a little bit more, maybe something for me. And we decided to pursue actually bringing the bar studio here. That's really cool. And that's neat that it, it is a part of, you know, fitness is a part of health and well-being. So it's just a different, you know, just different side of what you were doing before. Uh, so what has been the greatest reward since you've opened the studio, do you feel like? I would have to say, and this is probably so cliche, but it's the community that was, that has been built and not even by me, by the women with inside the studio, the women who are coming in day to day, who are forming friendships that go beyond the walls of the studio. They're supporting each other and pushing each other in class, but then they're there for each other outside of class. So it really is um, just an incredible community that with COVID has really brought us all closer together and has just shown us all how important staying connected really is. Um, that is by far the biggest reward. I didn't, I knew that we would build a community. That was my biggest goal is to like find this group of women and bring us all together. Um, but it's kind of blown me away how it took off. Yeah. And to me, I feel like everybody that I talk to that has a studio or works with a group of people, you know, in the fitness setting, it really comes down to that. It's just that whole connecting and, um, and sharing the love for that particular workout, uh, right. is what's so cool. What's been the greatest challenge since you opened the studio? Um, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are 18 months in and in the midst of, you know, this global pandemic, um, having to try to shift into the, the virtual world and trying to keep that connection. Um, you know, thankfully, we do have such a strong community of women that we've stayed really connected um, but keeping each other accountable because it's so easy when you're at home to maybe not push yourself as hard. Um, we're falling out of routines. We're trying to find new routines, um, but trying to find that balance of staying connected, keeping with your routine, staying in that fitness routine in particular, because like you said, it is a part of your, your overall health. It's mental, it's emotional, it's spiritual. Um, so this has definitely been um, a rough couple months, but it's also been a, a really good couple months, you know, because it kind of shows you um, what's really important and almost connects you a little bit deeper. Yeah, I feel like that that's probably what the, the greatest part of what's come out of it is, um, is maybe deeper connections with the people within your community just because the struggle is real and it's something that everybody's facing and everybody's experiencing. And, um, I feel like even people become more transparent and more real Yes, because I think virtual world has made it that way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. I totally agree. It's been, and it's also one of those things that you, you know, that you love, you know, say the workout in particular, you know, that you love this workout, you can still do it at home, but then you just realize maybe you weren't taking it for granted. Maybe we were kind of taking it for granted a little bit. And you realize how important that one hour of me time each day is for you. And, and it shows you how important it is. And, you know, you, you make it more of a priority now. And what I, I think another part that's cool too, is that, you know, a lot of times there have been times with, even with myself where I'm like, I can't work out at home. Like I need to be, I've got to be somewhere else or I've got to take it somewhere else. And then learning to have to really kind of, you know, carve out that time when I am at home and stay focused, you know, on making sure I do the workout and finding the space in my house or right outside my house to do it. So I feel like people have, have really had to adapt to that, even though that may not have been their choice. And now they, now they can, you know, now they can stay at home and do the workout and stay focused on it. Or like you said, you, you're, you guys have opened your studio for a limited number of people that can um, participate as of right now too, right? Yes. Yes. Yep. So super small classes so that we can stay properly distanced. Um, but yeah, definitely keeping, um, the virtual classes going, which I almost think is really cool. It's something 
that is going to become just part of our everyday platform now within Neighborhood Bar. We're going to keep these virtual classes because it may be a while before people are ever comfortable coming back inside of um, a studio or a gym. So having this option, this virtual option, I think is actually a really cool thing now. You know, looking back, you just have this new platform and a way to connect with other people because I've got people from, from high school who are, you know, across the country who can take my classes now. So there you go, going back to the connections. I'm reconnecting with people from high school, people from college, because we have this whole virtual workout now. And I'm doing it at home with them too. When my instructors are teaching, I've got my little place set up in my house. So they're seeing, you know, I've got my chair pulled up. I'm holding <laughs> on to my chair trying to do the workout. And, you know, just we're all in it together. We're all doing the best we can. And that's all we can do. Yeah, that's it. Well, and I, again, I think that's so cool. And it takes you out of just being in, like you said, your small area, it expands your network and people who've never taken bar might not be as intimidated to take it virtually first. Right. And then, and be open to it, more open to it. So I think it's so cool. And it's awesome to see everybody, people pivoting, like, you know, just having to just like make, you know, change it up and, and you don't have time to think about it. Like, Very true. (laughs) Am I ready for this? Is this a good idea? No, let's just do it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Okay. So you're a mom, you have three kids and I know that you have a set of twins, which that blows my mind, like having three (laughs) little ones and having a studio and managing all of that. Um, But what I, what I was really intrigued by was the story um, that your boys were born premature. And I know that that had to be really challenging for you and your family what kept you going through that time? Cause it was a good six weeks, right? That they were. Yes. They the were hospital. born. They well, actually, they were only in the hospital for three weeks. Okay. Um, they were in the NICU for three weeks. So they were born at 33 weeks. Um, they wanted me to get to 36. They had other plans. Um, but we have our daughter as well. And I having her at home, I think was just the greatest blessing because I, when you have to leave your babies at the hospital, you're released. They're not that. I don't know how parents do that if they don't have another child at home. That is probably the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. And there were um, days where there were other babies maybe being admitted to the NICU who were um, having issues and the NICU's closed and you're not even allowed to get back in to see your babies. Um, it's a really hard time um, as a mom, you're, you're, you've held them, you know, in your body for so long. And now all of a sudden you're, you're kind of torn apart, you're kept apart, but having my daughter at home for sure, um, helped big time and, um, just, just keeping me going, keeping me busy. You know, I had to, I had to push through, give her the attention that she needed. Um, and then of course I have an awesome husband who, um, super supportive and, you know, was there for anything I needed to as well. I'm, I have to brag on him. He's a real life Superman. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, I mean, we do have, I mean, I know my husband's the same way and um, I'm all about women, empowering women and women supporting women, but there are so many good men that support women um, that yes. we should shout out too, because there are, there's some really good men um, that show support. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, do you have uh, any, any advice on how to balance? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and a business owner and, and then making time for yourself. Cause I feel like that's a lot, you know, that's, that's it a lot. is. Oh my gosh. My life is crazy. I think people definitely look at me sometimes and think I'm completely nuts. Um, <laughs> But I, you know, going back to having, you know, I've, I've got my, my awesome husband, but um, my mom lives with us as well. Um, so I've got a lot of extra hands, a lot of people really supporting me. Um, but I really think you really hit on finding time for yourself. Because um, a lot of times people will think just because I'm working outside of the house, you know, when you're home, yes, I'm, I'm on with my kids when I'm here, I'm present with my kids but I still need that me time too. So I still make sure that I find that time um, for myself, whether I'm jumping on my Peloton, which people also, again, will look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, your me time is working out. (laughs) Yes, it is. 
<laughs> it really is. Um, or, you know, going pre COVID, going to get a pedicure or something by myself. I think having that me time um, where you can sit back, um, just take a minute, whether I'm running, whether I'm riding my bike or I'm sitting, getting a pedicure, you have that time to just relax, reconnect with yourself. Um, that's probably one of the most, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give, you know, life is crazy, but you still have to take that time for yourself because you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup. You got to fill yourself up to be able to give the most. So true and so important. And I think that that's one thing that women struggle with the most is that they think by going and working out like, or taking time for themselves, whatever that is, um, that it's selfish and it's not because if you're like you said, if you're empty, there's no way you can do for other people. Right. So it's really important. Well, and I thought if anybody should share that, it should be you because I still like because you're because <laughs> how old are your kids? Uh, my daughter is eight. The boys just turned five. Yeah, your house is wide open. <laughs> it's, it is wide open. That is exactly how you would put it. Absolutely wide open two five-year-old boys alone. I was going to say one five-year-old boy alone. I can't even imagine two and they're identical. Like that would just be like the energy must be just crazy. It's nuts. That's the only way to put it. It's nuts. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. It's a blast. Don't get yes. me wrong. They are so fun. They are the cutest. They are strong little boys. You know, we talked about them being premature. They were also um, they were both born with cataracts and people don't know that babies can be born with cataracts. So from the time they were born to the time they were six months, we had gone through, I think six to eight surgeries. They've worn contacts since they were 12 weeks old. So they've been through a lot, but they are, so they are super strong little boys. They have made us, they've made me a much stronger person. Um, they're, they're awesome. <laughs> wow. Well, so I have a question then how, like, you said they wore contacts since they were how old? 12 weeks. So how did you put contacts in? Like exactly how you would, I don't know if you yeah. wear contacts. I wear contacts. No, I don't wear contacts, so but I know it is, people go through to put them in and I'm just like. Yeah, they're just little teeny tiny contacts to fit their little eyes, but they do great with it. It's, you know, it's, it's all they've known. They've done it since they were 12 weeks old. They just got their first pair of glasses. So they are ridiculously cute in their glasses now. Um, oh, I bet it's adorable. Just, oh, they're so cute. It's, it's been a challenge, but you know, it's one of those things that it's one of those challenges that just, it, they show how strong they are and then we feed off that too. So it's, they're a huge blessing. They're awesome. It sounds like nothing but good vibes at your house. <laughs> it, most of the time. Yes. We try to keep it that way. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, one question for you, um, or I would just say one more thing is there that I want to ask you, is there anything else on your heart that you would want to share with women that are listening? Oh gosh, with women who are listening, just go for it. Whatever is on your heart right now, there are so many of us that have that dream. And I think COVID has given us that time to sit back and we've had more free time than we've ever had. So we're, we have these dreams, we have these ideas, just go for it. It's scary. The world is a scary place right now, but we as women are so much stronger than we give ourselves credit for. And we have so many people behind us cheering us on that we probably don't realize. We just need to go for it. Just go for it. Trust yourself. You will succeed. Dream it believe it, receive it. It will happen. Love it. So what's your theme song for you? Oh gosh. Okay. So right now the song that is on repeat, again, I'm going to sound so cliche <laughs> for the, with how the world is right now. Um, I would say I'm a super spiritual person. Um, so I've had this song on repeat. It's called Revolutionary, but it talks about um, when did kindness become revolutionary and hate become so ordinary. And it's so perfect for the world right now and the things that have happened this past year. It talks about flipping the script, judge slow, love quick. We're so much more alike than we think. 
um, take a couple seconds, put yourself in someone else's shoes, you know, stop, look, listen, start a revolution, just be kind, be kind to people. That's all you have to do. That's how we're trying to raise our kids. That's a message that we're trying to keep inside of our house right now um, with having open conversations, especially with an eight-year-old, um, being open about what she's maybe hearing on the news that we may have on in the background, not trying to shelter her too much, um, but having those real conversations and then just trying to teach them, raise them to be good people. Just be kind. Start that revolution. Just be kind. Yeah, I love that. Who's, who sings that? Oh my gosh, Josh, Josh something. I'll have to get, I'll get the, but what's the title of it? Cause then we it's can called always Revo it's, it's called, called I'm sorry. Yes, Revolutionary. Revolutionary, okay. So th I, that's really cool. I, I would so agree because I think um, I'm on the same page with you with the whole kindness and love. And I feel like right now, I was telling somebody this the other day, I feel like we're in slow motion where we actually take in what's going on where before we get moving so fast and we, we live in such a fast paced world that we don't always see everything that's going on. And now it's like, literally you see everything like it's we're we're that slowed down. Um, yes. but yeah, that we could, there's just love and kindness and just keep sharing it. So 100%, this has been, this has been great conversation. Thank you. Yes, so it has. On. So where can everybody find you? So we are on Instagram and Facebook. It's just Neighborhood Bar Concord, or you can go to neighborhoodbar.com. We are doing virtual classes every day. Um, and then we also are doing our um, super small in-studio classes right now. Um, but we are also on MindBody, on ClassPass. So we're, we're out there. We would love to have you join us. Yeah, I'm going to actually have to take, I, you know, it's funny, I've taken dance and all that my whole life, and I, I don't, I think bar is the only thing I have not taken yet. I haven't taken an official bar class. I took a, I think I took something similar to, or it may have not been, we didn't have bars. It wasn't that. I don't even remember, I don't think it was Pilates. I can't remember what she called it. I think it was kind of a mix, and I took that at a workshop, but I've not taken an official bar class yet, so... Oh, I'm going to have to get now. you in. <laughs> yes. Yes. I will have to now. Well, thank you again for being on. This is awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast, please like it and share it with other women in your life. For more information about SweatNet, just go to SweatNet.com or you can follow them on Instagram at SweatNet and at SweatNet Charlotte. You can follow me personally on Instagram at It Seals Smart. Stay tuned for next week's episode of the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast.